on the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Apologies, we're looking over pictures with Tom Cruise's career. Not Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise's career. And this is when I jumped out of one building to another. Wow! Yeah. Oh, this is when I jumped out of a plane by myself! Wow! Yeah. Whatever you think of Tom Cruise, you have to admit, his career is doing pretty damn good. Granted, there's a slip up here or there, but Cruz has proven he can be charming, funny, dramatic, and surprisingly kind of a badass. One of the reasons to see his films now is that he's doing several dangerous stunts, driving badass machines, and usually hanging off of something. The guy's like a male Lara Croft, even down to hating John Voight. And that shit is impressive. Really, it is. I can't do that stuff. But there's just something about it. Hey, you want to see an interview where somebody calls me incredible? Aren't there a ton? Hey, <laughs> yes, there are! Of. Oh, that's Tropic Thunder. I, I really need it after, uh... After what? Nothing! Let's just keep turning the pages this way! <laughs> yeah! Wait a minute, what are you hiding? Nothing. I, nothing. I think someone's career went through an awkward phase. No! Tropic Thunder didn't get me out of any trouble that my ego got me into in the first place, okay? Well, is that you jumping on Oprah's couch while wrestling her? No! Is that you as a samurai teaching the Japanese the importance of their own culture? No! Is that you saying psychiatry is a pseudoscience? How did you get that from a picture? It just it has that look. I knew it. Your ego's more under control now, but there was a time where it was totally insane. I was young. It's hard being constantly 35. And what's this a picture of? It was a phase. It's nothing. Is that a leather jacket and shades? That's like what a fifth grader thinks is cool. Oh, I think I know what it is. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. No. Really, I do. Oh, okay. That's Cruz's career at the height of his ego, Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> the Mission Impossible movies nowadays have gotten a reputation of being, well, good. They have good action, good writing, good acting, and ways to make awkward superhero movies even more awkward. But people forget there was a time when they weren't seen as that. The first film not only confused people, but it pissed off a lot of fans of the show with a lame portrayal of one of their lead characters. The third one underutilized one of Hollywood's great actors and turned into Snorefest with obvious plot twists, but by far the most hilariously bad was Mission Impossible 2. This film was directed by John Woo, a filmmaker who really wants you to know that a film was directed by John Woo. The days of a secret team sneaking in together with nail-biting suspense were gone, and instead replaced with Tom Cruise doing 90% of the work, while everyone else either types on a keyboard or bangs him. Thank God you got the short straw on Ving Rhames. This was so much about making Tom Cruise look good as opposed to making a good movie that became downright laughable. So sit back and see how over the top it can get. This is Terminator. No. Kung Fu. No. James Bond. No. Mission Impossible. Come on, look at it. It's just like the show. <laughs> we open with a scientist giving the most logical of speeches, resulting in the most radical of conclusions. Every search for a hero must begin with something that every hero requires. A villain. Therefore, we created a monster. What kind of dumbass scientist talks like this? What, you major in comic book hipster philosophy? But these first few seconds aren't nearly John Woo enough. Woo up that shit! The the wow, you're quite the art house director, Woo. Now let's immediately cut to Tom Cruise looking like that King of Kong asshole. Totally syncs up! You keep staring at that watch as if your life depended on it, Doctor. Okay, right off the bat, we know this isn't the real Tom Cruise because he's wearing a turtleneck. And in spy films, villains always wear the turtleneck! There's an aisle for them in Target. Oh, and here I thought the twist was he was gonna be Kevin Klein in the only disguise he thinks there is. They take the scientist's samples and blow up the plane, leading to a perfect representation of Tom Cruise climbing his own sense of self-worth. Captain, I do not think you realize the gravity of your situation. Okay, so it's cool that he's doing that stunt, but unlike the other films where it ties into the story and gets you more into it, what does this scene have to do with anything aside from Tom Cruise's erection size? No, seriously, there's a bug right there on that mountain saying, Boy, talk about being between a rock and a hard place. Because Tom Cruise has a very big penis.
What's up with the credits, by the way? Sometimes they're capitalized, sometimes they're lowercase, sometimes they're half and half. Ooh, maybe it's code. That's how you know we're in a spy film, guys. I don't trust a movie less professional than the writing on a kindergarten lemonade stand. But a helicopter comes around, stupidly points him out. No, I was pointing at the other Tom Cruise in this barren desert, you dumbass. And gives him his mission on sunglasses because Tom Cruise thinks he looks cool wearing sunglasses. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, involves recovery of a stolen item designated Chimera. God, don't you wish his mission was told to him on a pair of sparkling girl glasses? Then he'd be like, I don't want to wear them. You have to wear them if you want the mission. Oh, I'm still manly. Of course you are. Ooh, they're Samsung glasses. We poetically transition to Spain, where the beautiful dancers spin in slow motion, revealing the majestic nature and artistic elegance that only a Spanish dancer would be able to- This is Mission Impossible, right? We see Catherine Zoe Zaldana Jones stealing a hidden treasure when Tom Cruise sneaks in. What are you doing here? Think you're the only one who can pick a lock? Not just a pretty face after all. No, no, far less. Somebody walks in though, which means, oh no, we have to hide in this hot tub together. Do you mind if I'm on top? Physically, no. Name-wise, hell yeah. This is very disconcerting. Hey, you put me here. I just do as I'm told. The fact that you produced this movie really indicates the exact opposite. The owner comes in though, and Cruz has to talk their way out of it. It is Mr. Keys, our security engineer! Under the circumstances, I think we'd recommend resetting the sensors to respond to a lighter load. And get a slightly less silly jacket. Might I recommend the horny Willy Wonka suit I am currently being aroused in? I want to see how good you were. I was hoping we might work together. He asks her to join his team, but she refuses. So they rip off the car chase from Goldeneye because, you know, James Bond is a cool spy who gets a lot of pussy and Mission Impossible had Spock in it. Which one do you think Cruz is gonna go for? <laughs> Pull over and listen to me, will you? Just listen. Dianetics is a good book, damn it! Okay, why is every shot in this a cologne commercial? Cruise control. When you want to smell like you're trying too hard. He has a very big penis. They almost go off a cliff because... Romantic? And she agrees to accept his mission. I didn't mean it that way, but here we are. Damn, you're beautiful. Aw, oh, is there a mirror next to her? Mission impossible! We do spy stuff eventually! Oh, if only we could keep all these women from Tom Cruise's producing credit. I mean, just Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise himself. He's very secure. Very big penis. Oh, thank God. Here's someone to add some credibility. Festival's a pain in the ass. Damn near set me on fire on my way over here. Oh, 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 well, you, you're American now? Sorry I barged in on your vacation. Do you have any idea what the hell he's talking about? Are you listening to me? Uh, oh, yeah. Got it, average American Joe. Why don't you just sit over there next to Doctor Strange, House, and every other Chris O'Dowd performance? We were just going to talk about jazz and cowboys. He's told about the scientist being dead and that his double, Sean, was sent to him because Cruz was on vacation. Of course, they explain Sean went rogue because it can't be a Mission Impossible movie without an agent going rogue. I mean, we could, but then it'd be like an episode of the show and it, yeah. And Cruz has to use his now current girlfriend to infiltrate him as she was once Sean's ex-girlfriend. I don't think I can get her to do it. You mean it'll be difficult? Very. Well, this is not mission difficult, Mr. Hunt. It's mission impossible. Oh, I... Of course, of course, now it makes sense. You know, the whole time I was watching this movie saying, why is it called Mission Impossible? Like, it was confusing me. I couldn't follow it. But now you clarified it. Thank you very much. Not sure how that carries over into the other movies, like the explanation doesn't really match to those. Were there other thieves you had to convince to join your team and that's why I got that title? But I now know it started here. Even though it actually started here and even before then it started here. But you clarified the title so there's no confusion. Anyone want to see Halloween? So things are getting heavy, I guess, because they're really amping up the visual dramaticness. You use slow motion choir music and things waving in the wind a lot. I do not think it means what you think it means. 
Let's see these two talk like they've been in a relationship for years, even though they just had a one-night stand brought on by trying to kill each other in cars and hot tub thievery. Somewhere in the course of business, this got personal as well as physical. Would it make you feel any better if I didn't want you to do this? Yeah, much. Then feel better! Well, that was weird. Let's talk happily about what we were talking angrily about a second ago. You know, Sean will never be anything but suspicious if I pitch up saying, Hey, honey, I'm home. What wouldn't make him suspicious? I don't know. Given as a spy, you suck at blending in. I imagine not much. She pretends to be in prison, in which Sean breaks her out. And only 35 minutes in, do we finally get a spy team! This is like doing an X-Men movie for the first half hour. All we get is the kid who changes channels by blinking. A goddamn power I really wish I had right now. Anything you need me to get, move or watch, just let me know I'm your man. I'll have a look around. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Look around. What? Yes, it is. My first big introduction and you Jar Jar Binks me? Nobody muscle cooler than the crews. So Bubbles and Proto Simon Pig set up while, wait, shot in the dark, slow-mo dramatic music and things blowing in the wind? You know, I say visual storytelling is good, but you still have to tell a story with your visuals. Wow. You really thought that was a big deal, didn't you? You know, weirdly enough, mundane things are still mundane even if you run them in slow-mo. In fact, they're even more mundane because you have even more time to realize how mundane they are! Spy team watches what's going on from a satellite. It's him, Billy. Yeah, so we got him. We don't know what we've got. Because we don't know what he's got. Where he's got it. Or if it's bigger than mine. But Moriarty here thinks that Sean shouldn't trust her. Why do you think she's really young? When she left you six months ago. Suggestive, but hardly conclusive. Will you two just kiss already? You have more sexual tension than Max and Nee from Catfish. Yes, that is possible! <laughs> Don't worry, this won't be the first time we rip off Darkman in this. I am gagging for it. <laughs> and that's where I walk! If somebody cut off my fingertips, I'd be like, bye, I'm gonna go join the dickholes that are hunting you down. True, the pillow talk was nice, but this is just abuse. Sean takes Naya to a horse race where she plans to meet up with Cruz. Yeah, there are many, many jobs. How'd you do? Oh, there you are. You're like Batman, but only better. He sees that the dead scientist has been working on, what else? A deadly gas. You know, we're not short on gases that kill people. Why is this always where mad scientists go? We have a buffet of death under our own kitchen sinks. Go outside the box! They decide to visit a CEO who seems to have a connection with Sean, surprisingly, in a non-subtle way. George. George. Well, better look at today's paper, that's what I do in this situation. You gave me tomorrow's edition! This will not do! <coughs> well, that's going on, Cruz apparently visits Naya. It'll all be over. Very soon. You're not Cruz, he'd never allow himself to dress so average. Indeed, it turns out it's Sean who discovers she's a spy, but he has his own plans for her. It is critical that you do whatever. Asks. You're gonna have to do some weird sex stuff. You know the bunny from Space Jam? He has a suit of her. For the sake of the mission, you're gonna have to be open-minded. The real Cruz is questioning the CEO as the dead scientist. You miserable bastard. You stole Bellerophon. All of it. I need it now, you whacked out Russian gypsy. I swear if I lose an eye before I do one of those Potter films. You are genetically splicing together strains of influenza to create a cure for all influenzas. So, here's an interesting thing. When you hear John Woo's Mission Impossible 2, what's the first thing you think of? Over-the-top kung fu, motorcycles, shades, and leather jackets, right? But we're halfway through the movie, and surprisingly, little has happened. I dare even say, it's kind of dull. If this was Face Off, we'd be on Cage's third scene chewing right now. But this one seems more concerned about having Tom Cruise stand in front of sunsets. Couldn't that sun just be a giant Nick Cage? <laughs> it's a John Woo film, nobody would question it! they figure 
Yeah, Sean has the cure, but not the disease, and they both plan to break into the CEO's building to get it for themselves. You'll never break into Biosite from the bottom where security is heaviest. Hunt will prefer to enter Biosite somewhere from the top where security is minimal. And because he thinks he looks cool hanging off of wires. So he does exactly that, with no backup plan in case this guy saw him. Well, that was lucky. And he goes to retrieve the virus while Sean enters from the other entrance. I'm exiting raspberry red and entering lime green. Seriously, what is with scientists and colored light bulbs? But Sean and his team interrupt, and Cruz has to fight them off. What was that, a Tasmanian devil spin? <laughs> Even Bubbles' car gets infiltrated. Not sure how a rearview mirror sees under a car. Must be one of those high-tech spy mirrors. Well, Hunt. What did you call me? How you been? Finding a bit of a cold. You know, that was the hardest part of having to portray you. Grinning like an idiot every 15 minutes. Yeah, let's now create hero and villain chemistry an hour and 20 minutes into the film. But I saw them walk in slow-mo, that's all I needed! Come on out here, you bad girl. She doesn't belong here. Let her go. Okay. It was bound to work at some point. Give the film some credit for the only intentional laugh in the entire thing. Now is in the building. Do you copy? Thank you. PJ, you won't believe this, but the stalk is really Robin Hood. Naya cleverly sticks herself with the virus, meaning they can't shoot her, helping Cruz escape. What do you think you were doing? I wasn't thinking. Screw you, asshole. This was a good plan. She gets you out, guarantees her safety a while longer. What was your plan, flirting with him in a hot tub? We've got 19 hours and 58 minutes! And all she has to do now is simply escape with him. Thanks again, Dick Cheese! You can hold on to a mountain with your knees, but not a woman half your weight on a parachute. Well, great. Now she's in the hands of that violent villain who... leaves her walking along some pleasant scenery. Okay, am I the only one feeling that Spy Kids is out spying everybody right now? Don't worry, they make up for it by having a secret meeting with the CEO, which is so heavily guarded, a guy climbing up the back can get in. You know, for a film series called Mission Impossible, everything seems very possible. You should have just called it Mission Wow, this is stupid easy. Like, stupid easy. <laughs> Tom Cruise breaks into the secret hideout, and there's my birds. Oh yeah, John Woo goes to John Koo. Whenever the situation presents itself. Hell, even when it doesn't present itself. <laughs> Somewhere in Sydney, care to harden the target? I can't until I can get the GPS up on all. What is he killing this guy in his spare time? Both of you need to put more effort into this. That's more like it. If only there was a symbolic visual that could allow John Woo's ego and Tom Cruise's ego to jerk each other off at the same time. by so much insecurity. I'm getting an STD just looking at you. Oh, don't worry, by the way. The symbolism follows him around. Okay. It's funny enough seeing that dove fly right in front of him during an explosion like God and the Devil climax together. But it kind of loses its grandeur when he's just hiding in a corner with it. Oh boy, Duffy, are we gonna go on an adventure today? Maybe we're gonna fight some crime, or solve a mystery, or learn how hamburgers are made. I hope we learn how hamburgers are made. I like hamburgers. I smell the everlasting peace of Jesus Cruz. Cruz and Moriarty get in a fight, leading to Cruz apparently being defeated, yet not saying a thing at all. Yeah, we're doing this dumb shit. <laughs> We're all so many steps ahead, we're reenacting Rocky at the top of those steps. Oh my god, they're do they're really doing it! They're killing Tom Cruise! Well, but absolutely play your big choir music, cause we just lost a saint! He's been Tom Crucified for our sins! I mean, it's... Odd that all the advertising shows him even more in the film, fighting and riding motorcycles. Like... All the advertising, but that's just dedication to their marketing fake-out! Tom Cruise knows how to keep us guessing- You ripped off 
Dark Man again? This film steals from everything except Mission Impossible! Thank God I had a makeup chair and several hours to apply that mask on him. Time to put on my incredibly important shades. <laughs> See, you guys are all missing because you're not wearing your shades. It's not just to look cool, they're very practical. They are! Huh, it looks like Cruz's narcissism is inflammable. Despite him clearly being flaming. High five, okay. So he partakes in, let's be honest, some pretty enjoyably stupid stunts. I'm awesome, 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 I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Okay, the shades are bad enough, but Healy's Tom? Really? So it's mano y mano with Sean and Cruz. Thank God they had that couple minute talk to amp up the intense rivalry that's been building. We know shit about your past and you talk for two minutes. Yeah, this is earned. Yes, that was exactly as dumb as it looked. I think the only reason they agreed to do this is because rocket jumps and bike fencing weren't invented yet. In fact, wouldn't you just pay anything to see them miss? What? Yeah. By this point, we really should have bad Japanese dubbing. Mr. Cruz, I can tell you are very upset. You have never seen me very upset. Your power is strong, but mine is stronger. And now I have you right where I want you. But you forget I am Tom Cruise and I produced this movie. Ah, good point. Let me just let you get on top of me like I'm not even trying to fight back because you are so awesome. I am so awesome. You are so awesome. Cruise has a chance to stab him and kill him, as I guess these random waves are supposed to indicate. I don't get it. Wait. I don't get it. But he doesn't stab and kill him. That is not the Tom Cruise way. I'd much rather shoot that shit out of you, because that is the Tom Cruise way. I don't know, I had a bird flying by in slow motion, so this all has to mean something. So the cure is given to Nia, and what, are you still here? Well, Mr. Hunt, as for Miss Hall, in light of her efforts, her criminal record will certainly be expunged. I'm off to do a Transformer sequel rather than ever be in any of these movies again. Think about that. Cruz meets up with Naya to prepare to forget about her by movie three. In by far one of the strangest parks I think I've ever seen. Why are they throwing a football like that? In fact, are they throwing a soccer ball too? How are you gonna run a kite in the air with an area this crowded? Are they juggling fire? Who juggles fire in a park? Yeah, enjoy that kid only two feet away. One slip up and you'll be an extra from Total Recall. No, 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 no. This is awkward, this is strange, it doesn't make any sense. I'm only giving this two flaming doves. <laughs> It's funny, when this film came out, it was praised for all the spy stuff, but criticized for Cruz's and Wu's ego boosting of themselves. But the interesting thing is, years later, the spy stuff is pretty boring and the Cruz and Wu stuff, while ridiculous, is still wildly entertaining. These are two over-the-top artists who love portraying themselves as more important than they probably are. But when done this extreme, it's kind of fun. Weirdly enough though, I could have used a lot more of it, as much of the film is very slow and forgettable. But people still remember the over-the-top moments enough, I guess. Though usually with mixed results. It's definitely not Mission Impossible, it's just kind of an awkward mess. But if you're in the right mood, that awkward mess can be laughably enjoyable. You think you're tough making fun of my career like that? No, no, well yeah. I'll show you! I'm gonna remind everyone how amazing I am by hanging myself out of a helicopter, falling on a plane, carrying a building! No, no, Tom Cruise's career, it wasn't about the stunts at all. Yeah, it is. People didn't start liking you again because you put yourself in danger. I totally did. They liked you because you can be a good actor when your ego doesn't get in the way. It's 100% the stunts. But when you look at- It's the stunts, critic. You're right, it's the stunts. They're just so cool! Really? There's, there's no truth to what you are saying before? Nah. Okay. I guess I'll see if I survive my next flick. That'd be great. Okay. He was amazing in Magnolia, though. My favorite is honestly Rain Man. Oh, how about in Collateral? Oh, oh Collateral, my gosh. obviously, but when you really look, really look at Rain Man, yeah, just sort of the different great. layers. Did somebody say something? Stunts! 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 I'm a nostalgia critic, and we're probably all. Stunts! 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 Stunts!
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing the Elizabeth Glacier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. This foundation seeks to prevent pediatric HIV infection and eradicate pediatric AIDS through research, efficacy, and prevention slash treatment programs. They've emerged as the worldwide leader in the fight against pediatric AIDS, working to draw top researchers to the field as well as creating programs to provide a full range of critically needed prevention and treatment services in developing countries. They're also training tomorrow's leaders in the fight against HIV and AIDS and advocating for children with policymakers. Their programs offer hope for children and families living with HIV and help create a generation free of this awful disease. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see the tons of good deeds and wonderful treatment they offer to so many of those in need. Click on the link and show your support for those who give so many people so much hope.